Yes, so uh, I just want to introduce our uh, next demonstrator, uh, Steve Matza from the uh, Consolidated Aircraft Supply Company. Uh, if you haven't ever visited his uh, uh, mechanic shop in uh, Opok, uh, uh, you know, it's just a magical place completely jam-packed with engineering and physics applications left and right, and he's a wonderful host. Uh, and. We're blessed to have him here every year to give great physics demonstrations. So come on up, Steve. So Consolidated Aircraft uh, is a component aircraft repair shop. We fix everything on a plane except radios, we do pumps, generators, starters. So today I'm going to give you a little bit about old aviation history and how it ties in with Tesla. In the early days of aviation, Airframes were very weak, and they would only have one engine on the aircraft. As time went by, the airframes got stronger, they added a second engine for better speed and better safety, but that created a, a bit of a problem, uh, an audio problem, something that you would hear in your ears. If the two propellers are not turning at the same speed, you get a deep frequency effect. And what's happening with the propeller, as a propeller blade passes in front of your line of sight, your ears, it creates a high pressure wave that hits your ears. And back in the early 60s, Grumman Corporation uh, started manufacturing the Gulfstream 1 aircraft. It's a, a twin turboprop aircraft. It's got two turbine engines turning propellers. The turbine engines are turning at uh, 15,000 RPM, which is way too fast to turn a propeller. So they put a 10 to one gearbox reduction in front of the engine. So the propellers are now turning at 1500 RPM. The propellers have three blades. So there's 4,500 blades passing in front of your ears every minute. If you divide by 60 seconds, you get a 72 Hertz tone coming off the, off the propellers. Now I can give you that tone. Right? Sounds like a lot of airplanes. Now as soon as you turn on the second engine, which is running at hopefully the same speed, I'll start up a second frequency generator, second speaker. I've got one at 72 hertz and one at 74 hertz. So you're getting a change in volume every two seconds. Wow, wow, you know that change in volume. Now can you imagine the pilots and the passengers listening to that for a couple hours? They, they would turn suicidal. <laughs> so Grumman always prided themselves on making the best aircraft out there. So they got together with the Dowdy Propeller Company who obviously makes their propellers, and they wanted to try and figure out how to get the two engines running at exactly the same speed so you don't hear that beat frequency effect. So they came up with a, a brilliant idea. They put a small AC generator on each engine. All right, and the engine is turning this shaft in the middle and the generator is a three phase, has a three phase output. What that means is there's a permanent magnet inside the generator. So it's a single, it's a straight north pole magnet, two pole magnet, and there are three coils. There's three coils of wire in here, 120 degrees apart. So every time the magnet turns, you get a pulse out of one of the coils. So there's three pins in the connector, so you're getting three pulses coming out of this connector plug. And going back to Tesla technology, they're taking those three pulses and putting it into this special induction corrector motor, they call it a prop corrector. Inside this prop corrector are two of these coils. And these coils, again, it has three coils, 120 degrees apart, and it's fed the power off this little generator. 
and there's a rotor, an induction rotor, that's in the middle of the corrector motor. I'll show you the top in a moment. And as it's getting the signal from the generator, the rotor has an induced voltage. Induction motors have no carbon brushes between the outer stator and the rotor. That's what Tesla's induction motor is all about. So one generator wants to turn this special rotor. If you look at the rotor, it's got two induction stages on it. All right, so one generator is trying to turn the rotor clockwise, all right? And then the signal from the second generator is wired opposite the, first, the one on the other engine. So the, the rotor is getting a clockwise signal at the top and a counterclockwise signal at the bottom. So if the two engines are running at exactly the same speed, this rotor doesn't turn at all. It stays stationary inside the unit. The wires are arbitrarily labeled A, B, and C. So, and the same thing in the generator. So this generator, the ABC pins are going to the ABC leads inside the corrector motor. The other generator, the ABC pins are going to ACB pins in the corrector motor. So that's how you get the opposing induction effect on this very special rotor. Then at the top of the rotor is a helical gear. And the helical gear is attached to a, a brass gear. Here's the, the top of the rotor, the helical gear is attached to a brass gear and it turns an, an output shaft right here which is hooked up to the fuel control. So this little output shaft is adjusting the fuel control to give more or less fuel to the engine. And that's how the two engines will now run at exactly the same speed when the pilot energizes the corrector motor. This is only on one engine. All you have to do is correct one engine so it matches the other. So it's a, just a brilliant way to get the two engines running at the same speed. There's no way the pilot could adjust the two throttle levers. You just wouldn't have that sensitivity to, to listen to the beat frequency and adjust the throttle levers. It just, it's just not sensitive. That should be part of the licensing idea. <laughs> so here's that beat frequency again. I'm going to bring it up to 300 hertz so you can hear it a lot, a lot better. cycles or 60 hertz this is 60 hertz or 60 cycles you would hear that tone if you walk by a large transformer next to a factory or all air conditioners run at this frequency if you listen to your air conditioner that's usually the sound coming out of it and for you guitar players out there, if you 
plug your guitar cable into the amp without the guitar hooked up, you hear this 60 cycle hum. It's the, uh, the bane of any guitar player. And then another tone that you might want to be familiar with is if you go to an or orchestral concert, the concert master uh, on piano or the violinist will play a middle A tone. So the rest of the orchestra has to tune to that one A tone because you can't retune a piano on the stage. So that the A tone is 500, it was 440. Yeah, Who said 440. that? 440. 440. So we'll give you some 440s. to tune to that tone. All right, now, now that I've got your attention, we can do a quickie hearing test. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, we're not going to grade it. And as, uh, I see four people in the front who are going to wing this. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. I'll, I'm going to raise the frequency up, and if you want to participate, just hold your hand up like that and put it down when you can't hear the frequency anymore. Now as I get towards the higher frequencies, it'll sound like a dental drill, so forgive me for that. This is 4,000 hertz. 5,000. 6,000. 7,000. 8,000. 9,000. 10,000, 11,000, 12,000, 13,000. I can't hear it anymore. My hearing is shot. 14,000. The kids could probably go even higher. 15,000, 16,000. 17,000. <laughs> you kids can still hear it? I don't believe them. Yeah. <laughs> can you test them somehow? 18,000 cycles. You still hear it? I know it. Test them. I do. Yeah, turn it off and turn it on. Turn it off and on. Tell me when it comes on. Yeah. Oh, you can hear it quick. But. Yeah. 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 What if you still hear the ringing when you shut it off? <laughs> 19,000, you still hear it? Yes, now I can. 19,100, you still hear it? Wait. Going once. No, you don't. Going twice. You can't find it. I don't know if those speakers can produce that. I don't know if the speakers respond to yeah. that higher frequency. Just so the next 2,000 are going to hear it. Good, go back down and have them raise when they can hear it. Yeah. yeah. You know what? Yeah, I'm going down the frequency. I can hear it again. What is that? 15,000? Oh, that's why I can hear it again. It's back. Yeah. I do this in the classroom, and it's amazing how many kids have destroyed their hearing. Yeah. With the, with the iPods yeah. cranked in their head. Yeah. So they're losing it like 13,000, 12,000. Oh, I hear that. Oof. Yeah. That's it. Now, if you want to visit me at uh, MacArthur Airport, Consolidated Aircraft, just Google it and call, call me if you want a tour. It's a very interesting tour. I still hear it. Yes, I'm going to shut it off. <laughs> so how many, uh, how many uh, people here have been to a tour over at Steve's Place? Yeah, definitely. Uh, if you talk to any one of these people, they'll tell you to go. Awesome. We should have a Tesla Mini in there one year. We don't have space. Yeah, so no space. Stuff. No space. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's no room for when you, when you Lots of stuff you to have a tour. You Lots of stuff going on. Thank you. Any questions? Your place is like an amusement park for nerds. Oh, it really is. <laughs>